praise the living God, praise the living God. This is Apostle Steve Carriaga from Word and Love Ministries International. First of all, I would like to welcome you, all of you who are watching all across the world. If you're watching from Kenya, Tanzania, Nigeria, from all parts of the world, if you're watching in England, America, welcome to the Master's Voice, the voice of Jesus. This is our first episode, and uh, I would like to promise you one thing. After, after this show, I declare that your life shall not remain the same. Hallelujah. After this show, you will be impacted like never before. After this show, you will be lifted like never before. Glory to God. And today we'll be talking about faith that never fails. Hallelujah. Faith that never fails. You know, that statement and faith actually never fails. Faith always works. Praise the living God. Because God created this world. God created this world by faith. And I want to take you to Hebrews chapter 11. I want to take you to Hebrews chapter 11. And we're going to read from verse 1. Uh, now, I'm just going to give you the definition of faith. I know you have studied it. You know you have read it many times. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. So uh, just flow with me. And he says now. From uh, Hebrews chapter 11 from verse 1. This is what he says. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. The worlds were framed by the word of God. The universe was inside God. It was God's desire for him to create the universe. And the first point I want to talk to you about, or before I speak about the point, first of all, if you go look at the Amplified Version, the Bible says that faith, is the title deed. Hallelujah. When you have, a, when you're owning land, whether you're owning land in Mombasa, whether you're owning land in Nakuru, you don't need, or whether you're owning a house, you don't need to carry the house. You have a title deed. So faith is a title deed. So the first point I want to talking about, I want to talk about, is seeing in the spirit. Everything that God has said, everything that God has spoken, you have to believe it and see it in the spirit. Praise the living God. You have to believe it and see it in the spirit. And you don't see it with your physical eyes. No, you don't see it with your natural eyes. Because faith is not physical. Faith is spiritual. You have to see it in the inside first. You have to see it in the inside first. That's why if you, if you go look at the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 8, when God was telling Joshua, meditate upon these things day and night, then thou shalt have good success. So as you meditate in the word, God will give you visions and you will be able to see what he has promised to you. You will be able to see the things that were given to you in the realms of the spirit. Praise the, praise the living God. So that is what faith is. So the seeing realm. Hallelujah. Uh, you have to train your mind on how to imagine. If you are passing through a difficult time, through sickness, uh, if God has given you his faith to cancel that sickness, maybe you are passing through a time when you are going, you're, where, where the, the devil has afflicted you with cancer, with the faith of God, you can cancel out that cancer. But you have to believe 
You have to believe that whatever God has imparted in you. Hallelujah. So the more you spend time on his word, the more your faith rises. So you have to, you have to continue to spend time with, the, with his word. You have to continue to take time with his word. You know, the Bible says, faith comes by hearing the word of God. The more you hear God's word, the more you spend time on God's word. That is how your faith is being strengthened. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. We are still speaking about sin. And we, I would like us to go to uh, Genesis chapter 15. And we'll go to Genesis chapter 15 from verse 6. Now I want to speak to you about this Papa Abraham. And how, why is he called the father of faith? Hallelujah. Okay, we'll start from verse... We'll start from verse 5. Genesis chapter 15, from verse 5. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven. Tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. He said unto him, So, the, so shall thy seed be. So, what God was teaching Abraham was how to see. God took him outside. Look at the skies. Are you able to number the stars? That's how your seed will become. This time, Abraham, uh, Abraham and Sarah. Sarah never had a child. But they were believing God for a child who was Isaac. So he had to have faith. Praise the Lord. When, when, uh, when Sarah gave birth, to Isaac, she was 90 years old. And Abraham was 100 years old. Hallelujah. So, he, he, did not look at, he did not look at how frail his body was. Or how frail was, uh, or how frail was Sarah's body was. But, he believed that what God had said, what God had spoken, will become. He believed that everything that God has said, everything that God has spoken, everything that God had told him will come to pass. But what it is, he had to see it. This reminds me, when Abraham was separating with his, uh, with his nephew Lot, when Lot was mo moving to Sodom and uh, Gomorrah, then Abraham decided to take the dry land. Now, what God, just, what God, uh, what God told uh, Abraham, look east, west, not south. I have given it to you. And uh, like Abraham saw the whole world. Hallelujah. He's our father of faith. Praise the, praise the Lord. And as a born child of God, God has given you a measure of faith. But what does, God, uh, what does God expect you to do? God expects you to grow that faith. It's given to you small. But God expects you to grow it. So it is your responsibility to grow that faith. Praise the living God. So we are spoken about the seeing realm of faith. Next, I want us... Or before we speak about the sin realm of faith, I want us to go to Luke chapter 8. Let's go to Luke chapter 8. The woman with the issue of blood. This story always inspires me. And I know it, it, it also inspires you a lot. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 8. And we're going to read from verse 43. And it says, And a woman having an issue of blood, 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him 
and touched the border of his garment. And immediately her issue of blood touched. And Jesus said, who touched me? When all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude throng thee and press thee and says thou who touched me? And Jesus said, somebody hath touched me. For I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. Hallelujah. So, the woman with the issue of blood, she had had an issue of blood for 12 years. She has spent all her money on physicians. She had been spending all her money on physicians for 12 years. I'm sure she ran dry of finances. Then she heard about Faith comes by hearing. She heard about this man called Jesus. The miracles that this man called Jesus was performing. And how powerful Jesus was. So, what happened was, there were many people around Jesus. And she, she told herself, she promised herself, if I can just touch the border of Jesus' garment, just a, just a little piece of Jesus' garment, I will be made whole and I will be, get healed. So, in that crowd, there were many people standing in front of Jesus, around. So, she was able to enter in between. This woman was not even a Jew at that time. She was able to enter in between, in between. Then she touched the hem of, of Jesus' garment. After that, Jesus felt that power had left her. Jesus turned and asked, who touched me? Who touched me? Peter. Uh, 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 Peter said that, ah, many people are touching you. Many people are touching you. Jesus, many people are touching you. Somebody touched me. That was a touch of faith. It was not an ordinary touch. A touch of faith. Until power had to leave Jesus. Many people were touching Jesus that time. But they were not receiving. Many of them were just touching Jesus. But they were not receiving. So what happened? Uh, she, she felt a bit afraid and she told Jesus. That I'm the one who touched you. Then what did Jesus say? Your faith has made thee whole. Praise the living God. But before that happened, she heard of Jesus. She heard the mighty miracles. So what did she do? She painted the picture of her being healed. She saw herself. She saw herself being healed before she received her miracle. She saw it in the spirit. She saw that as soon as Jesus touched me, I will be made whole. Hallelujah. And her sickness dried up. Her sickness dried up. Hallelujah. So whatever sickness that is in your body, I declare from today, you will be made whole. But you have, to you have to receive it by faith. Hallelujah. Same to Joshua. If you read the, the book of Joshua, chapter 6, verse 2, when Joshua and the children of Israel, when they wanted to take over Jericho, the walls of, the, the walls of Jericho were high. The walls of Jericho were high. It had men inside. And God had given the children of Israel, Jericho. 
But I like what God said. Uh, God spoke in past tense. And he said, Joshua, I have given thee Jericho. He was speaking in past tense. That means he had already done it. That's why uh, the book of Ephesians says that God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. And so he told Joshua, I have given you before physically they hadn't taken over. But God had already spoke. Just like Abraham. God had told Abraham, I have made you a father of many. That time, Isaac hadn't come. So God always speaks ahead of time. So whatever situation on the outside, whatever situation you are facing, don't be moved. Don't be moved by what you are seeing with your physical eyes. Be moved by what God has said about you. Praise the living God. The next point I want, to, uh, I want to talk to you about. We have already spoken about seeing in the realms of the spirit and receiving it by faith. The next point I want to, uh, I want to talk about is speak into existence. Speak whatever you want into existence. And I want to take you to the, uh, to the book of Mark chapter 11. Verse 22. Let's go to Mark chapter 11, verse 22. And it says, I'm, I'm, I'm reading it in the King James Bible version. And it says, And Jesus answering, saith, unto them have faith in God for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain be thou removed be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever he saith. Verse 24. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Hallelujah. Uh, let me just repeat uh, verse 23. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea. Shall no doubt in his heart, shall believe that those things which he, uh, which he said shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. So, if you read the, uh, the before verses in this chapter, Jesus was hungry, and he saw a, tree, a fig tree from afar off. But he never found figs in the fig tree. So what happened? As he was hoping to find them, he didn't find them. So he spoke to the fig tree that no one shall eat fruit out of this fig tree. And then the disciples around had him. That was the day before. Now the next day as he was walking with the, his disciples, he saw, him and his disciples, they saw that the fig tree that he spoke to had dried up. Then he turned back and said, have faith in God. In other words, have the God kind of faith. That fig tree had dried up. So what he did, he spoke to the situation. And why did he, he was teaching the disciples and us, his, us, that we have the power in our mouth. If we just use our tongue correctly, if we just use our mouth correctly, we shall have everything that we desire. 
So he spoke to the fig tree and the fig tree dried up from its roots. So when you go to God, even in your prayer time, you have to believe that what you have, come, uh, you have asked for will come to pass. You have to believe that God will perform, perform the miraculous in your life. And that is what he did. He spoke it into existence. So he spoke to the situation. If, the, uh, if you have any unfavorable situations, any nagging matters, speak to those situations. Hallelujah. Just, this reminds me, in Ezekiel chapter 37, when, uh, when God took Ezekiel through the spirit in the valley of the dry bones, he asked him, Son of man, can these dry bones live? Then uh, Ezekiel returned the question back to him. God, you are the one who knows if this dry bone can live. So what did he say? Prophet, sigh unto these bones. Then, as Ezekiel prophesied, the, the, the dry bones came together bone to bone. And he continued to prophesy. Flesh came upon them. And he continued to prophesy. Those, uh, those dry bones had flesh and they breathed. And they stood up. So he spoke those things into existence. Let's go to, let's go to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1, from verse 1. You all know it. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. And the earth was without form and void. And the, uh, and the darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was moved upon the face of the waters. And God says, let there be light. And there was light. So the earth was formless. The earth was destroyed. But here, God is teaching us how to speak. As, as the earth was, whatever you're facing, just speak. Open your mouth and speak. But you have to believe first. You have to believe first from your spirit. You have to believe on what you're saying. You have to believe on the word of God, on the inside. Hallelujah. You have to believe. So speak to every situation. Speak to certain things. Uh, if, 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 if things are not going well in your home, if everything looks like it has dried up, if your finances have reduced, you can speak to situations. You can speak to your bank account. Because the Bible says we are gods. So we are like him. We've got his nature in us. Hallelujah. So the, God has given us the power of speech. Hallelujah. The third point I want to speak about is the point of acting your faith. Hallelujah. When you receive the word, you have to act. You don't pray alone. If you, have been, if you have been desiring a job, you have to print your CVs and go look for it. It's not prayer alone that will do the work. But you need to get up and do it. If you want to start a big business, you have to write your proposals to those companies so that they can bring you in. Hallelujah. So you have to act your faith. Hallelujah. You have to act your faith. You have to voice your faith. Because the power is within you. The Bible says that out of their belly shall flow rivers of living waters. Live rivers of living waters. Hallelujah. And you have to Teach yourself 
on how to give glory to God, how to give thanks. The things that you have asked for, the things that, that you have asked for in prayer, just be lifting up your hands. Just be thanking God. Just be telling God on the great things, what, you are, what he has given you. Just be blessing God that God, I've received my healing. I thank you for my healing. I've received my, uh, my money for school fees. I thank you. Oh, Father Lord, I thank you. You have to be giving glory to God. Thank you, God. That is what Abraham was doing. And Abraham was our father of faith. Hallelujah. Did also learn to give glory to God. And you must learn on how to receive. You have to receive your miracle before you see it physically. You have to receive your miracle. Praise the living God. Praise the living God. And right now, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're going through right now. But I want to pray for you. And I want you to receive your miracle by faith. From where you are, all across the world. Hallelujah. I just want you to receive whatever that you ask for by faith. Hallelujah. If you're sick, I want you to hold whatever, whatever part of your body that you, uh, that you feel that sickness. Whether it is in your, is your chest, whether it's in your kidney, whether it's in your liver, wherever. Whether it's your lungs. I will speak God's word upon that thing. So I want to pray for you. Father Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray for your, uh, your children. I pray for whatever circumstance that they are going through in their body. I declare healing upon their bodies right now. Whether let that arthritis leave, let that back pain leave. In the mighty name of Jesus, let them be made whole again. And if anyone is going through a problem ever in his finances, Father Lord, send the angels, open the doors of finances for him or her. Father Lord, I thank you for their healing. I thank you for their breakthrough. And I thank you for opening their doors in the mighty name of Jesus. God, God we give you praise. We thank you. We honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I declare right now that you've received your miracle. Now, wherever you are, do what you are not able to do. Praise the living God. God bless you. This is Apostle Steve. And I will talk to you next week. Hallelujah. There are still more and more that I want to teach you. Hallelujah. From the word of God. God bless you so much. God bless you so much. And when God, may God keep you in perfect peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah.